Well, good morning, Vietnam. You ever? Well, some of y'all don't remember that, do you? That was during my time, but uh, it looks so good to see you here this morning, everyone, to uh, enjoy the uh, good Sunday school uh, lesson our pastor taught this morning. And we was blessed, and uh, right after service, we're going to have some locusts and wild honey for you. And uh, But there is going to be some good, sweet stuff going on here in the service this morning, because the Spirit of the Lord is here. I believe that, that I don't care what the devil says and what he can do. If we will focus our mind, our soul, on worshiping Him, in honoring him, according to the scriptures, he'll be in the midst. Would you stand with us? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we just bless the Lord. I said bless the Lord. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you just take a moment, just put your mind on the greatness and the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you're so good. Lord, when I am just so disconnected, Lord, you're still connected. Lord, when I'm just so burdened down with things and don't know where to turn, Lord, you always know the way I need to go. I bless you. Hallelujah. I just feel the presence. Lord, I give you honor. I give you praise. Hallowed be thy name. Great is your name. Righteousness and holiness that belongeth unto you. And Lord, you loved us so much that you clothed us with your righteousness when we called upon your name. Lord, accept our worship this morning as we worship you in song and in spirit, Lord, this morning. Lord, we pray and we magnify your name. Let's worship the Lord and give him honor this morning. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Jesus, Jesus, tell him what you want. Jesus, Jesus, tell him what you want. Jesus, Jesus, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. 
If you want your sins forgiven, tell him what you want. If you want your sins forgiven, tell him what you want. If you want your sins forgiven, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, just call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, just call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, just call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Jesus, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. And if you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Well, if you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, just tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Call him up, call him up, and tell him what you want. Call him up, just call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Jesus. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, just call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Hallelujah. All you need to do this morning is call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he will hear your cries. He will hear your prayers. And you don't have to leave here like you came in Jesus' name because he is in his house this morning. Hallelujah. Leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick, or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. And you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick, or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. And you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the sick, to set the captive free. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, 
won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, you don't have to leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, he is worthy of all the glory this morning. Give him the honor and the praise that he is due. Hallelujah, he is King of kings and Lord of lords this morning. that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name would care to feel my hurt who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am the flower quickly fading, I'm here today and gone tomorrow. Away tossed in the ocean. A vapor in the wind still you You hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you told me who I am I am yours Who am I that the eyes that see my sin Would look on me with love and watch me rise again and who am i that the voice that calmed the sea will call out through the rain and calm the storm in me well not because of who i am but because of what you've done not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading. I'm here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still you, you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours. Well, not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading. I'm here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean. A vapor in the wind still you. You hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling. And you told me who I am. I am yours. That the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt. Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart? Well, not because of who I am. But because of what you've done, but not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading. I'm here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind still you. You hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours, not 
not because of who I am, but because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, I'm here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean. A vapor in the wind, still you, you hear me when I'm calling, Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am, I am yours, not because of who I am, but because of what you've done, not because of what I've done. But because of who you are, I am a flower quickly fading. I'm here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still, you, you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that this morning? Amen. Aren't you thankful that you belong to Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you for that this morning, Lord. Come help us out in the choir, singing out that red back book this morning. Let's have a good turnout as we minister songs unto the Lord this morning. I believe today is the day the Lord has made. Amen. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful for victory. I'm thankful for the blood. I'm thankful that I am more than an overcomer simply because of the blood of the Lamb this morning. Hallelujah. Nick and Sophia need you this morning as you turn students, please. Go help us out. Hallelujah. Looking for you in choir. Amen. Page number 120, are you glad you got victory in Jesus this morning? Where would we be without him this morning? Amen. Let's sing it together this morning. Precious blood, 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 blood. 
heaven and thank you for victory this morning. Lord, we praise you for the victory we have in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what's been done for us. Thank you, Lord, that one day we called upon you as our Lord and as our Savior. Lord, and you forgave us of our sins. Lord, and because of that this morning, there is victory, victory, victory in Jesus. And for that, we are grateful for today. Move in this place. Lord, help us, Lord, to know that you're with us. We'll forever be grateful for today. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, glad I have the victory in Jesus I know we have a lot of ups and downs in the church of God but I'm going to ask you to get up one more time would you do that one more time with me hallelujah you know when the enemy comes in he tries to convince us that we've lost the battle You prayed, you've read the word, you've done everything you know to do. And he's almost convinced us just to throw up our hands and quit. I don't know if you've ever been to a place that you've cried when you can't cry no more. I'm debating whether to say this. I remember. I had an evangelist run me a revival one time, and he told this story that he was an old country evangelist, and he, at this one church, he preached his heart out. And everybody said and said and said like stony hearts. He got up the last night, he said, I've cried and I preach. I've slung snot and everything else. I know what to do. He said, I don't care if the whole bunch of you die and go to hell. He said, when he done that, the altar's filled up. The devil tries to convince us there's no use. When you've done everything you can know to do. And I'm going to be talking about this praise and getting in the face of God later on, but... Sometimes all I know to do is say, Glory! Hallelujah! Begin to pull from the well that's deep inside that Jesus said, Within you is a well of water. And if I don't know to do nothing else but to praise Him and give Him glory and give Him honor and thank Him for all that He does. Would you say glory with me one more time? Glory! I bless your name. I bless your name. Hallelujah. Just give him praise. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When I don't know how to pray, but I can holler glory. Hallelujah. When I don't know what to ask him, I can just begin to look on his face and begin to thank him and glorify him. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Shema Katalama Shatalba. I bless your name, Lord. I bless your name. Hallelujah. Just forgive me for that little thing that I like to do every once in a while is just to bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's not forget tonight after service time around the alders, you're invited to go with us to Wendy's and Okoy Journey Fellowship. Sit around the table and uh, uh, just have some time together. That's this evening after service tonight. Then Tuesday, let's not forget those that are in the praise team to 6 o'clock, our practice. Then Saturday, this Saturday at 5 o'clock for prime timers and for some of our new folks is our recycled teenagers, you know. That's folks 50 and older. Uh, we invite you this time we're going out. Uh, one of the reasons is due to... Uh, our limited space right now until our school uh, buildings get here in a week or two and we can our fellowship hall is is school hall right now and uh, we're going to invite you to go with us to the Golden Corral in Claremont and those that uh, want to meet here at the church will load up in the church van and we'll go over in the uh, as a group uh, into the Golden Corral in Claremont and those that wants to drive can meet us there we're going to meet here at the church at 5 o'clock and try to be there by 5.30 and hopefully have the rooms uh, uh, thing set up so we invite you for all the prime timers at 5 o'clock to meet here or to meet us at uh, Golden Corral on 50 in uh, Claremont for our time and we'll have a little devotional uh, sit around and eat and uh, fellowship together. So we invite you to be a part of that prime time or Saturday. Let's continue to worship the Lord, Pastor. Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? All right, about three of you do. I learned that from Brother Jarman. Amen. <laughs> do you love the Lord this morning? Yeah. Amen. So good to see you on a Sunday morning. You look good this morning. Look over at your neighbor, tell them they look good in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I told Sister Rebecca a little bit last night in the office. I said, there's, a, uh, there's something I'm glad about tomorrow. And she said, what's that? I said, I'm glad tomorrow's not homecoming. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whoa, man, what a week we had last Sunday. And, and the bishop, I think, nailed it right. Sometimes we try to put way too much in. But, hey, you got out of here on time last Sunday morning. And we got a lot done. What a wonderful week of revival, Bird Jarman. And, and uh, we just had a great time. And I appreciate all that's been done. And I know I said some things uh, in, in last Sunday. But let me say again, whatever you've done for homecoming, whether you prayed or you were present, those that worked around campus on Saturday, those that worked around campus prior to that Saturday. We had folks in the building and on campus doing things. Uh, um, we never could have done all that was done if it wasn't for you. And I do want to say as the lead pastor, thank you for your faithfulness and your help. And, and uh, we got more done than I had uh, originally scheduled to be done. And that's because we were ahead of schedule with your help and all that you're done. And there was some special folks. And I won't call names this morning because I always get in trouble when I do and they get on to me. But you know who you are. Thank you for everything that was done. And, um, and I think it's a sad thing if a frog does not croak for his own pond. So I want to say thank you because we have a beautiful campus. Can you say amen? And uh, it has been noticed in the community as I have been out and around. And I am thankful for what... Uh, uh, what has happened I don't know um, if you'll let me reminisce just for a moment we've been here 12 years and uh, some of those bushes have been out there that long and we went back and we think some of those hedges are probably 30 or so years old now I may be totally wrong on that but some of you that have been around a long time says man they've been here forever so uh, we hope that nobody fell out with us and uh, I got good comments from you some of you would ride by and blow the horn I know what that means. Good job, Pastor. Now, you might not have meant it to say that, but if you're going to ride by and blow the horn at us while we're working, I'm going to take it as a positive thing. Amen? And uh, thank you for all that was done. Pastor mentioned our buildings. Let me bring you up to speed on that. I believe we are about that close, okay? And uh, what, what has happened, and I'll take just a moment and update you since he's mentioned them. I think it's important. I've tried to keep some key folks up to date, but we literally have three modulars 
sitting in Orlando that have already been painted yellow and white to match our building that are ours I mean I've already signed the contract for them they are ready to deliver them however um, the, uh, our, our county is not being favorable in one area that they've been good to work with but you own the entire block here say praise the Lord for that but it's in five parcels because we did not want to put anything against the church. The church is debt free, has been debt free for longer than I've been here. And you worked hard to pay that. And I don't think and you don't think it's a good thing to put any of it up for collateral. So when we bought the property behind us, the rental home that is leased, uh, it has a mortgage and it connects to our church property. And uh, they're not giving us credit for owning that, meaning they're not letting me get too close to it. I have to stay 10 feet off of that property line well there's not a whole lot of space between the back of the uh, Sunday school rooms and that property line so we've had to rework some site plans and and I've asked everybody and their brother you know is there any way you'll stretch the rules you know because they break the rules for everybody else why can't they stretch them for me just a little bit and um, the last comment from the building manager this week was 7.9 feet pastor which is like almost 8 is not 10 feet so you are 25 inches short and no sir we will not break that rule for you even though you own the entire block so we've had to go back and they have been very helpful with us and it looks like um, they're going to consider the fellowship hall and all three of those buildings just as one big building now I know that kind of overwhelms some of us and I had to go look it up myself but they're going to consider all of that as one big building because we're still below the 6,000 square feet with all those buildings and if that works which they're saying it will so if they say it will it will can you say amen then it looks like all I have to do is have an architect sign a letter that says that and we have secured that architect and he's doing that for us actually it's an individual that Rebecca went to MIP with he works for an architect it's the same architect that built the Lady Lake Church of God he's been on this campus before he says pastor I'll write you a letter if it, if it meets the code I'll write it and put my name on it it's no problem whatever I can do for the Church of God so he uh, has been helpful to us and they're hoping to review all that tomorrow and I'm hoping I am hoping and I am praying now I want to go to heaven but if I stay here I need some buildings amen and uh, I'm hoping that we can get that resolved this week and as soon as we do I will make the phone call and tell the modular company get those things out here I've got 67 kids that need a place to go amen and so uh, that is the update and we're very close and I'm hoping to report to you uh, in the next couple, couple of days that that is on schedule everybody's ready the septic tank vendor's ready the fire alarm vendor is ready the electrical vendor is they're all ready to come and start working but there's no buildings and I won't let them pull them on until I know for a fact that we have a permit number that has been approved because I don't want to anything negative to come against the church I don't want you to ride by and see them in pieces out here for three weeks I just don't want to do that I want it to be the very best it can be and uh, so I've asked them to wait until that's done and we are very very close and I think I'll still have a little bit of hair when it's all done amen and uh, I've promised to myself after the driveway project I wouldn't do anything else like this well I gave in and I did this now I'm promising myself before I won't say before the Lord I'll say before you that um, after this now I think we've maxed out this parcel so we're going to have to uh, pay off some debt and we're going to have to put some properties together if we want to do anything else because they're telling me, Pastor, you're trying to put 10 pounds of potatoes in a 5-pound bag. And I said, well, that's the way I operate. Get all you can out of it. Amen. So uh, thank you for your faithfulness there. And we're very close. And I know our school staff will be excited. And uh, I know our Wednesday night meal people will be excited. And I know our youth group and Amplify will be excited to have some space back. And you have been more than flexible and patient with us. And we're thankful for that today. That's the good news. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Ushers, would you get ready to wait upon us this morning? Give us an opportunity to worship with your tithes and with your offerings. While they're coming... Pastor Ricky and Pastor Renfro, would you just come stand right here beside me? Just, just come stand beside me. This comment was made last Sunday, and I want to demonstrate it. I am in good company. Can you say amen? <laughs> Brother Renfro mentioned that uh, we got the same shirt on. Hallelujah. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't plan that either. But Brother Renfro mentioned last Sunday that um, Pastor Thomas has some pretty big boys to stand beside him and I want to say I love both of these men and I do feel like I am in good company and uh, if I call them I hope you guys come running because if I've got them alongside of me and you pray and we're going to be okay in Jesus amen and uh, I wanted just to show that I am the smallest of all three 
It was a comment made to that last Sunday, and I couldn't do that with the bishop here, but I can do it now. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. That's all I wanted you for. That was it. Hallelujah. This morning, it is the second Sunday of the month. Let's do our Alaska update if we can real quick. And uh, last Sunday, uh, we were presented an extra thousand dollars toward the Alaska program going to a new church plant in Kodiak. And uh, our um, uh, Grace Worship Center congregation has pledged at least a thousand dollars to that. So including their money and what's been coming in, we're at forty eight hundred dollars toward our goal, which is seventy five percent, I do believe. And, uh, and we got till January, and I'm going to ask you not to give up on Alaska. I don't say a lot about it. Uh, we, we, uh, I, I'm just asking you to give. If you're new to our church, uh, that is our goal. We've taken $6,400 until uh, we say October 14, because we started it at homecoming. Should have ended it at homecoming, but January of this year, the Okoy folks raised the, raised the goal, and Brother Brinson was here, so I've told them we would stretch it till January. And so I need about, what is that, about $1,400, $1,500 more dollars or something like that, $1,800 more. So if you'll just give a little bit every week, $25 or so, Market Alaska, don't know what to do with it in the finance office. And um, I, God's blessed Okoy for 59 years and the things that have been happening around here. And uh, we've just taken this on as a way to bless Alaska, uh, doing some money at the uh, Kodiak Church there, the new church plant that Bishop mentioned on our call last week. So um, if, I don't say a lot about it, but I thought it was proper to do that today. And uh, you just market Alaska. It's in addition to your tithes. Don't, don't redirect your tithes. Your tithes belong to the Lord. Amen. They go to your local storehouse where we can do ministry. But above that, if it's just five bucks a week, whatever you can do, uh, Market Alaska or any of our projects. We have a lot of new people. If you have any questions about any of our giving, if you'll call the office, we'll do our best to help you with that. We want you to know what you can get involved in because I believe if people know where their money's going and they know it's going to ministry, they'll give to it. Amen. It's God's blessed me. I, I couldn't do what I do without him. And that's what this is about about this morning. So ushers, would you serve us this morning with our tithes and with our offerings? Father, we love you today. Thank you for the privilege we've had to give of our tithes and of our offerings. Lord, thank you for the family of God. Thank you for the love that we feel in our heart. Just pray, God, that you'll bless every gift that has been given this morning. Multiply it to meet the needs of the ministry. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, bless the families that have given this morning. God, just let them realize, God, it's not ours. It's all yours, and we're faithful, Lord, to give that that belongs to you back to you. But, God, when we do that, your word says, God, that you'll meet our need. And I'm thankful for that today. Pray that that remains portion, Lord, will take care of the needs in our home, Lord, and that we'll give you praise and honor and glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everybody said amen. amen and amen. Thank you again for your giving this morning. Since we are finished with homecoming, I will bring your attention to the October 31st event on our calendar, which is our fall festival. Uh, new this year, we are actually going to be able to split the entire cost of that event, 50% for church and 50% for school, so I'm going to make them pay for some of that this year and not let the church carry all of it. Can you say Praise the Lord for that. And so uh, we're working right now with um, dunk tanks and bounce houses and car smashes. And, and the Ferndale Jail will be back again this year.
this year, but it will be enlarged where it can hold more people because it was just not big enough for some of you jailbirds last year. And so uh, we're looking for a great time, popcorn and cotton candy and nachos and cheese and things of that nature. So uh, the flyers are out. It's in your bulletin. Make sure that you, uh, you, you, you will get it up on the marquee. But we need your help. I, I'm going to keep the cost down. The only thing that I'm hoping to charge for is the jail because that's the point of having the jail. Amen. Uh, but I'm hoping to take care of all the candy and all the food. And uh, we can just uh, make it a community event for our church, an outreach event. But I need two things from you. Number one, I need you to do a trunk or treat out of your vehicle. Okay. We did that last year. It worked very well. And so I need for you to let us know if you can do a trunk or treat out of your car we'll line you up in the one way the kids will come by and you'll load them up with candy so I need you to donate your your trunk or the back of your truck or something uh, where you can decorate it in some kind of theme for a trunk or treat event during that two hour event on on the 31st Secondly, I need bags of candy. Just bring them by the boatloads, okay? Um, give them to the ushers. They'll put them over in the ministry center. Or if you're out and about through the week, you can bring them by the office. But we need individually wrapped candy where we can make sure kids leave here loaded up on sugar. Can you say amen for that? Amen. So that'll be that event on the 31st. And we do want to make it early known to you where you can help us with that. And we're looking forward to a great time in the Lord as we uh, we just come and we just, I don't, I don't do Halloween. I don't I don't go that route, but we're going to have a fall festival, and we're going to have a day or an evening where we come and just have a good time in the Lord. Is that okay with you? Amen. Worship with Sister Cherith as she ministers to you in song. After she uh, ministers to you in song this morning, I've asked our newest staff member, Pastor Ricky Faircloth, to come and preach for you this morning. And uh, he says, right after revival, Pastor? I said, right after revival, buddy. And so he'll come this morning and minister to you, and we do welcome him and his wife on staff. I'll be preaching tonight, if the Lord will it to go that way and uh, Pastor Renfro mentioned uh, something that he is going to be doing starting this Wednesday night do you want to say anything about that more than you have okay but this Wednesday night for the next two Wednesday nights in the main building he is going to be sharing on, on, on that concept of praise and and uh, you don't want to miss that so seven o'clock this Wednesday night and uh, for the next couple of weeks Pastor Renfro will have the main building here as we are continuing to work through all of the schedule changes and the staff and he says I'm ready I need two of them I said you got them they're coming so uh, be here Wednesday night for that as well let's worship in song and then Pastor Ricky will come and minister the word. Sometimes my spirit gets low and it seems I can hardly go. Still I see victory. And sometimes I'm walking by faith And I can't see what lies before me Still I see victory I've just got to tell you Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by his blood you may stare, you may fight, you're going to lose the battle tonight. Remember, you can't cross the bloodline. I've just got to tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. You may stare, you may fight, you're gonna lose the battle tonight. Remember, you can't cross the bloodline. It seems we're fighting a lot, and the battle gets hot. That's when I remember, Jesus is the rock. So old Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and get back to you. No, you're going to lose. I've just got to tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. 
You may stare, you may fight You're gonna lose the battle tonight Remember, you can't cross the bloodline I've just got to tell you Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by his blood You may stare, you may fight gonna lose the battle tonight remember you can't cross the bloodline you may stare you may fight you're gonna lose the battle tonight remember you can't cross the bloodline And God is good all the time and all the time. Again, we can never praise the Lord enough for everything that he does for us. I want to say thank you, Pastor, for allowing me the opportunity to minister here today, the Sunday after homecoming. I said, are you sure you want me to do the Sunday after homecoming? He had me do the Wednesday before homecoming, and now the Sunday after homecoming. I said, are you sure, Pastor? And... Uh, so I'm thankful for that. When I, we talked about this transition, I said, Pastor, I'm here to help you in any way that I can. And he's took that literally. He's had me preaching Wednesday night, Sunday night. He's had me Friday night. I was in the school and learning that and uh, trying to become familiar with everything. He's had me running errands, going to Ace and going picking up shirts. And he just had me going all over the place. But I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the uh, faith and the confidence that you put into uh, me here. Uh, thank the Grace Worship Center for being here today. Grace Worship Center is now part of you. And I want to say thank you very much for all of you being here today. I love you and appreciate you for the 20 years that you invested into Grace Worship Center. And I want to say that publicly. And I want to thank you for being here today. Showing your support and showing your love and your hospitality. You never know how much I appreciate it. But I want to say also thank you to the Church of God. I was only expecting to come here as a member. I wanted to join and be a part of a church. Because it's very important that you go to church. I said, Pastor, I need a church. And he said, Pastor, I need an associate. So let me present it to the board and see if you can come help me. And I thank you for the love and the support and the hospitality that you showed me, the faith that you put into me. I appreciate it, and I'm here for you to do anything that I can to help you. That's what I'm here for is to do whatever the pastor needs, whatever I can do to help you. And I appreciate you and love you very, very, very much. Amen. Let us open with a word of prayer and stand, and we'll go to uh, Matthew chapter 5. Father God, we thank you for your divine presence, your divine anointing. We thank you for your Shekinah glory of God. Your presence has been in this house today. Thank you for the anointing of your precious Holy Spirit. Father, Lord, as we go into the reading of your word today, I pray that you would let it be sharper and powerful today. I need your touch. I need your anointing today. The things that you've been dealing with me this week, Lord, I pray that you let it to come out. Father, Lord, let me to speak the oracles of God. Let me to speak, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And, Father, Lord, I pray today that you speak to our hearts and speak to our lives, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's begin with chapter Matthew chapter 5. And let's go ahead and begin with verse number 1 there. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught him, saying, Blessed or happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice! And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This is referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. He's starting off with the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are the blesseds or the happies. And I want to look at one of these today. And uh, Tana, as we've been, homecoming was awesome last Sunday, wasn't it? And homecoming revival has just been an awesome week and a powerful week. But during revival, God speaks to your heart and God speaks to your life. And the Lord was speaking to me and during this revival and trying to get things ready. And I was just letting him speak to me. And the thing that kept coming into my heart and to my life is verse number 6. Blessed are they do which do do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I want to ask you a couple of questions today. Are you hungry today? Are you thirsty today? And if so, what are you hungry for? What are you thirsty for? What are you longing for? When you look at these words, the words uh, hunger and thirsty, now, Friday, I was here in the school, helping out in the school, uh, watching and trying to just spectate and see what was going on. And then I had to go to leave and go to a funeral as a minister. And then I came back. But uh, that morning, I ate me some breakfast. And then at 10 o'clock, they had their snack. And at snack time, I left. Went to do the funeral. When I came back at 1.30, they was through with lunch. So I didn't get no lunch there on Sunday. I said, Past on Friday, I said, Pastor, are we allowed to eat? I missed it all, and I was hungry. So we finished out the day, and then I went home to get ready for revival, and I was starving. I had to find me something to eat before I come to church. I was hungry. So that's what it means. Are you hungry? He said, blessed are you that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Are you hungry today? Are you starving today? What are you hungry for today? In our hearts and our lives today, sometimes we hunger for position. We hunger for advancement upon our jobs. We hunger for uh, position and possibility and these things. We hunger for all of these things today. But I want to ask you today, what are you hungry for? What are you thirsty for? As the children of Israel were coming out of the Egyptian bondage, the Lord had brought them out of uh, Egyptian bondage and brought them through the Red Sea, and God delivered them through the Red Sea. And immediately after they got through the Red Sea, they went three days' journey, and there was no war. What did they do? They murmured and they complained. They murmured and they complained. They murmured and they complained. And Moses said, what do I do to these people? There was no water. There was no water. They was thirsty. What did God tell them to do? He told them, look around and see that tree that I've knocked down. Look upon it. And our hearts and our lives, if we want true righteousness in God, we want true righteousness, what we must do is, first of all, God shows us the answer. The answer is the tree. The Bible says, Cursed is a man that cried upon the tree. And Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Jesus Christ took our pain. He took our suffering upon the cross of Calvary. And he became a curse for us. So what did the first thing God showed Moses? He showed him the answer. The answer was a tree. And in our righteousness, if we want righteousness in our heart, we want righteousness in our life. Righteousness comes through the cross of Calvary. It comes through what Jesus Christ done for us on the cross of Calvary. And that is where our righteousness comes from. And that's what we need to be hungry for today. That's what we need to be starving for today. That's what we need to be thirsting for today. It's the righteousness of God. It's not by works of 
righteousness that we are saved. It's not by the works that we do. It's not by attainment that we contain. But the righteous we get comes through Jesus Christ who loved us and bore his Christ on the cross of Calvary that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Righteousness comes today through Jesus Christ today. What are you trusting in? What are you confiding in? What are you hungering after? What are you thirsting after today? If you are thirsting for all of these other things, or thirsting for a position, thirsting for all of these things, it's all useless. But if you're thirsting for the things of God and thirsting for God, what does God said He would do? He said, I will fill you. I will fill every crevice. I will fill every crack. And today, we just came out of revival and you've got in and you've got blessed but revival's over but I want you to know God is not over I want you to know the homecoming's over the revival's over God's not dead God is still alive and he's alive forevermore and I want you to know today you can still be hungry today the revival's over God's not over the revival's over God's not over the river of life still flows in this Bible Jesus said if you're hungry and if you're thirsty come unto me and I will give you rest come unto me and I will feel your longing come unto me today I want you to know he provided them the manna from heaven they got after the thirsty God told them to put the tree in the water and provided them water after that three days later they went out of there and they got hungry now there's no food we should have been back in Egypt there was no food what did God tell him? I will show you. I will show you what I'm going to do. He said, gather the people together. And he said, I'm going to give them quail at night. And I'm going to give them manna in the morning. He said, I'm going to give them food to eat. But I'm going to test them and to see if they believe in me. He said, he's going to give them enough. Every day you just get this portion if you hold it over, it's going to be rotten. It's going to be stink. And it's going to be no good. What he was saying, every day you had to go for a new touch. And I want you to know today, if you're hungry for God, if you're hungry for the righteousness of God, every day you've got to go for a new touch. Every day you've got to go for a new drink. Every day you've got to go for some more quail. Every day you've got to go for some more water. Every day you've got to go for the more heaven, the manna of heaven. Jesus told the disciples, he told them the, as he was ministering to him, he said, I am the bread of life. M Moses provided the manna of heaven he said, I am the bread of life. In fact, he was telling this to the Samaritan woman at the well, you remember? He said, how can you get me? Well, you don't even have a bucket. He said, I am the well. I am the water. Jesus said, I am the bread. I am the water. In our hearts and our lives today, whatever we have need of, it comes through Jesus Christ. It comes through Jesus Christ. Psalms 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalms 42, 1 and 2 says, As the horse heart or the deer panteth after the ward is brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the true and the living God. Psalm 63, 1 and 2 says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and a thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and to see thy glory. So have I have seen in thee in the sanctuary. In our hearts and lives today, I want you to know it may seem like there's no water. It may seem like there's no bread anywhere. It may seem that we're in a barren land. In America, we need revival. In America, we need an outpouring of the Spirit. And it doesn't seem like it's anywhere. But I want you to know the water is still there. The river is still there. The bread is still there. And the only thing we got to do is hunger and thirst about it. David, King David, had these desires. Oh, that is the deer panted by the water's brook. My soul longeth for thee. What are you longing for today? Is 
your soul longing for Jesus Christ? Is your soul longing for righteousness? In Sunday school, it was talking about John the Baptist, and it said that he was murdered. He was uh, be, he was beheaded. He was uh, for the cause of Jesus Christ, and it said that he obtained the righteousness for it. Let me give you a definition that I found that was very fascinating to me. As it said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They had the, the, listen to this. This is one of the commentaries said this about righteousness. Righteousness here means death unto sin, a renunciation of the world, and a deliberate choice of God. So what is Jesus telling us here in these Beatitudes? He says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. What is righteousness? It's not your good works. It's not things that we attain. But it's choices and decisions that we made in our life. It's choices and decisions that we made in our heart. It's death unto sin. We must crucify the flesh. We must crucify the sin. We must crucify it. And, and we're talking about hungering and thirsting after righteousness. This is what he's talking about. Dying unto sin. Putting sin aside. We don't, we're not trying to be like everybody else. Not trying to be like the world. But we're trying to be righteous. So that means we put death unto sin. We don't live unto sin. We don't try to sin every day. We don't try to see how much sin we can commit and still be a Christian. Being righteousness is that you put sin to death. You put it, he said, so Jesus told disciples, if you're going to, you must deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Do you want righteousness in your heart? Do you want righteousness in your life? I want you to know today the only way you can get to heaven, the only way you can get through Jesus, through it is through Jesus Christ. Pastor was talking in Sunday school, said it doesn't matter what your parents did. Maybe your parents started a church or pastored a church or done all of these things, taught Sunday school. You can't get to heaven on no one else's coattail. The only way you can get to heaven is by you making a deliberate choice, a deliberate life. Said, I'm going to renounce sin, going to take sin out of my life, walk away from it, make a choice to live for God, make a choice for godly decisions in my heart and my life. And it's a choice to be made. So what are you hungry for today? What are you hungry for today? As we started this new year off at my church, the, the Lord put it in my heart today. Draw nigh unto God, and He will draw nigh to me. The Lord's been dealing with me all year long that we need God's touch. We need God's anointing. We need His power upon us. We need Him in our heart and our life. So as we ended this revival, I want you to know today that the revival hasn't stopped just because the evangelist has left, just because he went back to Mississippi and he started another revival somewhere else today. That doesn't mean the revival doesn't stop because Jesus Christ is still here. That river of life is flowing in this place. And the only thing we have to do is have a hunger and a thirst for God. How, what is your heart longing for today? The Lord's been dealing with me all year long. What are you after? In our hearts and our lives, sometimes we draw cold. Sometimes we draw weary. Sometimes we get thirsty. Sometimes we get hungry. But aren't you glad that that river of life flows freely? And the only thing we have to do is come before it. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. In your hearts and your life today, 
It doesn't matter what God did for you 25 years ago. I remember when I was 18 years old, God called me into the ministry. I was down at the altar crying and laying before the Lord, and the Lord was just speaking to me and crying. I said, more than anything, what I want, Lord, if you do this, I want your anointing, I want your power, I want your presence, I want the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon me. And I want you to listen to me, young people. More anything in your life, what you need is the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon you. Although you need the power of the Holy Ghost upon your heart. The pastor evangelist spoke the other day about the anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. I'm glad to see all of these young people that's up here involved in singing. And what you need to do is you're up there singing. Don't be ashamed to let that Holy Ghost flow in your heart. Don't be ashamed to let that Holy Ghost flow in your life as the Holy Ghost moves and dwells in your heart. I of your belly shall flow rivers of living water and when that water springs up within your soul when that water springs up within your heart I I want you to know it comes for a season it comes for a reason someone in the congregation needs what you have and you let that Holy Ghost flow through you when you're singing you let that Holy Ghost flow through you let it move through you let it touch through you because God's able to break every yoke of bondage and say the captives free. I remember when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. I remember the presence of the Lord being upon me. I remember praying for the sick and having a prayer and a confidence to know that there's nothing impossible but God. I remember being at church one day at First Assembly. There was a lady there in the church that was uh, kind of wild and kind of, uh, she would come to church, but just because you come to church doesn't mean that you're saved. I remember I was praying for her son one day at the altar, and I seen her coming when she was coming. I said, oh, no, I'm in trouble now. But you know when you have the anointing upon you, you the, the, the anointing cast out all fear. I didn't get afraid. I just, I, I seen her coming, and what I did, I just grabbed a hold of her and I prayed for her I laid hands upon her and God took care of the problem God took care of the situation and I'm what I'm longing for today I'm longing for the anointing of God to, to flow in my heart to, to flow in my life uh, for the Holy Ghost to move upon me like I've never felt before for that river of life to flow in my heart uh, and to flow in my life today Jesus uh, you remember in the book of Acts uh, Peter And then was walking. And it said, as they walked, the shadow of them passing by, they were healed. I want you to know today, God's not dead. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he's able to do it there, he's able to do it today. What God desires in your heart and your life today is for you to get so full of God, for you to get so hungry with Him, for you to get so thirsty for Him. God wants to use you in this community. God wants to use you at your school. God wants to use you on your job. God wants to use you in a great and mighty way. He wants the anointing of the Holy Ghost flowing out of your heart, flowing out of your life. While you're at work, you can make an impact. You don't even have to say anything to anybody. You can have so much of God's anointing, so much God's presence upon your heart that what? All you have to be there is be in the room and they will be healed. They will be changed. I want you to know God's not dead. He's still alive. I spoke to you that Wednesday night before homecoming and told you God's not dead. He's still alive and he's alive forevermore. So what I've been dealing with, what the Lord's been putting in my heart, Rick, you need to get back to where you were when you first got saved, when you first got blamed, baptized with the Holy Ghost, and God told you to do it. I had the faith to believe that God would do anything after time and after services. Sometimes we get cold. Sometimes we get a different. We go to the hospital and we pray for people, and the only thing we do is say a simple prayer. I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Help me. Bring me back to where I need to be. 
I needed the two and a half years that I've had here at the Old Coy Church of God. I want you to know you've been a blessing to me. I've been able to get in here and be able to just soak up. Sometimes we as ministers, we give out and we give out and we give out and we give out. Sometimes we need to soak up. And I've had two and a half years that I can soak up. I can drink of the living waters. And today it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter the situations in your heart. It doesn't matter the difficulties in your life. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what trials you're facing. But I know a man who can. Pastor sings that song. I know a man who can. I don't care what you've been going through. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care. What I do care is I know a man who can. He's able to meet your need. And only thing you have to do is have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. And that righteousness only comes by Jesus Christ. What he did for us on that cross of Calvary. What he did for us on that cross of Calvary. John 4, 14 said, But whosoever drinketh of the water I give him shall never thirst again. But the water I give him shall be in him a well a springing up into everlasting life. John 6, 35 says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So John 7, 37 says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and let him drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, that out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You know what he was talking about there? Though out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost moving in our heart. We need the Holy Ghost moving in our life. Today, it doesn't matter what America's doing. What matters is if this church will get a hold of God, though revival's over, if you continue every day in your life, every day in your heart, like every day they had to go get fresh manna, they had to get fresh quail. In your heart, in your life, you need every day to get fresh prayer. You need to get fresh word of God. You need to spend time with your every day in prayer and reading the word of God. And that's the way that we attain righteousness. They say, say, I cannot make it another day without God's presence, without God's anointing. And we fall down on our knees and we cry out to the, at the foot of the cross of Calvary and said, the cross is my strength. I don't have the strength to make it another day, but I can say I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And I want you to know, no matter the situation in your life, no matter what you're facing or going through at home, no matter what you're going through at work, I want you to know that through Jesus Christ, you can do all things. You are an overcomer through Jesus Christ. You are more than an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. Don't let the love devil defeat you. Don't let the devil get you discouraged. You hold your head up high and say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyhow, never, never let your troubles get you down. When like troubles come your way, hold your head up high and say hallelujah. Anyhow, how are you hungry today are you thirsty today if you have a hunger and a thirst through righteousness I want you to know that he shall fill you today if you're hungering after all these other things you may not get it you may not attain it but if you have a hunger and a thirst for the Lord Jesus Christ seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and you shall be filled. I want to go back to the definition that I said for, for righteousness. Righteous means death unto sin, renunciation of the world, and a deliberate choice of God. If you're going to hunger and thirst after righteousness, 
What you need to do is quit playing games. You need to quit playing church. And you need to make a determination in your heart, in your life, a deliberate choice that I'm going to live for God. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to be my victory. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to be my source. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to be my all in all. You must make a deliberate choice of God. If you don't make no choice of God, you'll never get into the kingdom of heaven. You'll never be filled. You'll never. But it's a choice that you need to make. And in our hearts and our lives today, we need a choice. What are you hungry for? What are you thirsting for? What are you seeking after? And I encourage you today, you put everything else aside, and you hunger and you thirst after God. You know what will happen? You'll get advancement on your job. You'll get all the things that you've been looking for. But if you put God first... God will take care of your promotion. God will take care of your job. God will take care of your education. God will take care of everything you need. Why? Because you're hungering and you're thirsting after the right things, and that is after God. What can wash away my sin? Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole and clean? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's the righteousness that you need to be looking for today. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Sister Wendy, come to the piano. In our hearts and in our lives, have we just ended a fantastic revival with a move of the Holy Spirit? It's very easy for us to get laxed because we don't have to come to church every day. I don't have to pray every day. I don't have to read the Word every day. But in our hearts and our lives, if we're going to hunger and thirst after righteousness, we need to make a commitment in our heart and a commitment in our life that I'm going to seek Him every day. Every day of our life, we must seek Him. Every day of our life, we must spend time with Him in prayer. Every day in our life, we need to take time and read the Word of God. Every time, every day, we need to spend time with Him. And if we take that time and spend time with Him, God will take care of every other need, every other longing you have. If you'll seek Him first, God will take care of every other need in your heart, every other need in your life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Okoy Church of God today. I pray for my congregation, this church that you let me to come to be a part of. Father, Lord, I pray for us today. I pray today that you would put Grace Worship Center and Okoy Church of God bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. I pray, Lord, that you would give us one vision. I pray that you'd bind us together. And that thing that we need more than anything is to hunger and to thirst after righteousness. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what you've been facing this week. I don't know the problems you've had in your life, in your heart. But I tell you today, if you would give it to God, that you would seek Him, God will be able to meet every need in your heart, every need in your life. God's not dead. He's in your life. No matter what you have need of today, if you're sick in body and you need the Lord to heal you, I want you to come up and I want to pray with you. Maybe you've had a rough week, a difficult week, and you said, I need prayer today. I want to pray with you. 
No matter what you have need of today, I want you to know God's greater than anything. And I want to pray with you. If you want to come and kneel around the altars and spend some time with the Lord in prayer, you're welcome to do that. But if you want us to pray for you, stand right here and we will pray for you and God's able to meet your need. Let's find a place of prayer. Come and kneel around the altars. Come and spend time with the Lord in prayer. And if you want prayer, special prayer, just come up and stand and we want to pray for you. We want to end on
He 
thankful for the word of God this morning aren't you glad if we'll hunger and thirst he promised he'd fill us amen amen go in the grace of the Lord love on those around you we'll see you back tonight at six o'clock for the evening service God bless you